Fetching data in React is not easy, especially because React itself does not care how you get the data that you display. Chances are, if you're using Axios or even worse, the Fetch API, you're writing spaghetti code. Unmaintainable, unreadable code that nobody wants to write or read in the first place. There's a better way. There's an easier way that handles all the stuff you normally need to worry about for you. The question becomes, how do I do that? How do I stop writing so much spaghetti code in my application? And the answer is with the spaghetti analysis. How does the spaghetti analysis work? We differentiate between the syntax of how we're fetching data, the loading state, an error state, a success state, stale data, and also how do we cache the results? How easy is it to cache? And the worst thing you can do is use fetch. It's bad in all of them. It's not good. And the traditional approach, I just want to demonstrate this to you. The, the way we use fetch, right, traditionally, by the way, this is a completely new React application. Nothing changed in here at all. The normal way we fetch data is by using a use effect. And in here, we fetch the data. We make a fetch request in here. If anything goes wrong, or if we want to check if anything goes wrong and gracefully handle the errors, then the code gets spaghettified because then we need to catch the error, we need to save the error in an error state. And as you can see, this approach, it's not it, champ. It's really not it. Then let's look at the second approach. It's better because in the syntax department, you know, it's actually way more enjoyable than using the fetch, and that is Axios. Axios, you probably know it is a library we can install by saying yarn at Axios. We can hit enter, and the way we make requests with Axios is way more enjoyable. At the very top of the file, we can import Axios from Axios, and the reason the only thing that's better in Axios is the syntax is because it, in that sense, replaces the fetch request in its logic. Instead of the fetch request taking the cake and throwing it in the mud as the syntactically worst approach you could take in Axios, it's easier. We can say await and then Axios dot, for example, post if you wanted to make a post request to your URL.com. And then we don't even have to stringify anything in the body or so on. We can pass our data just like this. We don't need to pay attention to the headers. We don't need to pay attention to the json.stringify in the body. The way we fetch data with Axios is way more enjoyable. And in here, in fact, we can destructure the data right away from Axios. So we get access to the data. We don't have to go through the whole await res.json ordeal because that's just annoying. However, what Axios does not do for us is this whole monstrosity here. We still have to do that because after all, it's kind of an abstraction of the fetch request, but it doesn't save us from handling loading state, from handling error state, success, stale data, or you know how do we cache with Axios? That's still an open question. And that's why the third approach comes in, React Query. And it does so much right, it's actually crazy. And React Query got renamed to TanStack Query, not that it really matters, and but the approach gets rid of all this and makes it so much more enjoyable to work with, it's crazy. And to benefit from that, let's get started with TanStack Query. We can install the dependency just like this with yarn at TanStack React Query, hit enter, and now we are almost ready to fully benefit from errors handled for us, stale data handled for us. It's just super convenient to use. So the way we can use TanStack Query is by first instantiating a query client. We can say const query client is gonna be equal to and then a new query client that comes from at 10 stack slash react dash query and invoke that. This query client will allow us to write queries, essentially the same logic as making a fetch request, but with everything handled for us. You're gonna see what that looks like right now. To be able to fetch data across all our components, we can make this query client accessible by setting a query client provider that we get also from React Query. Let's import that, the query client provider, and then close it after the divs. This is like a context provider that we need to pass this query client right here. We can click on client, it's gonna be equal to query client, and then with a few lines of code, we're gonna benefit from everything that I just mentioned from this whole table right here, from error, success, stale data, and caching, all handled for us. So let's take a look at how to do this. In here, let's pass a main component that we're gonna create, it doesn't exist yet. Let's go into our directory, create a main.tsx or jsx component. Let's call this main component so we then don't get a naming conflict. This is gonna be a TypeScript component. There's nothing TypeScript specific in this video. 
don't worry about it. And then let's render this component in here. And because we provided the query client to this component, we are all set to write our query. And the way we do that is by saying const and then an object because we're gonna destructure some properties, but we're gonna do that in a second, not right now. And then a use query. So what we're doing right now is writing the same fetch logic, but in a way better approach. We can import the use query just like this. And then in here pass an object that's our config object. And we can pass, for example, the query key that identifies this query. We can call this anything we want in a string array, for example, my data doesn't really matter. And then as the second parameter, we can pass it the query function. And this is nothing else than doing the regular fetch or Axios request as before. That's the same thing that goes in here. We can pass it an async function, an arrow function. And in here, this is going to handle the data fetching for us. So this could be just like with Axios, the const data is going to be equal to await axios.get and then make a request to myurl.com, some API endpoint that we have somewhere. And now we also need to import Axios. And the data fetching function is the exact same, but now comes the beauty of React Query. Check this out. If we take a look at the use query, what we can destructure from it, this is gonna be amazing. The data, we get access to the, er oops, the error. We get access to the refetch. If we ever wanted to refetch this query on a button press, we get access to something called is error. We get access to something called is loading. The entirety of the spaghetti code I showed you in the beginning of the video was abstracted away from us and we get access to these beautiful state variables that we can then use to display if our application is loading the data, if we had an error, what the error message was, or in the case of a successful request, the actual data. And that's why in the spaghetti analysis, the highly professional framework that I came up with, React Query ranks by far the best compared to Axios or Fetch, even though, you know, the main query in here is nothing else than a regular Fetch. All the handling that's around it is no longer a problem because that's what React Query is for.